Welcome to another episode of Kurdistan This Week, where we bring you the latest in the Kurdistan region from NRT Studios in Somani. Oil officials from the federal government and the Kurdistan regional government met this week in an effort to find solutions to long-running disagreements on the issue. Despite positive reactions, KRG spokesperson Safin Dizi said on Wednesday that further discussions are required because the issue is so complex. One part of the talks was about when the KRG would begin transferring the 250,000 barrels per day quota mandated under the budget law. Another was about how to approach Iraq's energy trade with neighboring Iran. Currently, Iraq is operating under a 90-day sanctions waiver from the United States, which is due to expire next month, just as summer temperatures begin to hit and energy consumption skyrockets. The U.S. has announced that it will not extend waivers for other countries purchasing Iranian oil and gas, but it has not announced whether it would grant Baghdad an additional waiver to buy natural gas that fuels Iraq's power plants. A further complicating factor is the lack of an oil and gas law to govern a revenue sharing and exports between the central government and the KRG. Talks are expected to continue. Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Çavuşoğlu spent Monday meeting with a range of government and political leaders in the Kurdistan region. He arrived in Erbil late on Sunday and on Monday met separately with KRG Prime Minister Nechervan Barzani and Deputy Prime Minister Kabad Talabani. He also met with the Chancellor of the Kurdistan Region Security Council, Masrur Barzani, and completed his itinerary by holding a meeting with the leaders of the Iraqi Turkmen Front. Before an arriving in Erbil, he spent Sunday meeting with officials in Baghdad and Basra. Dur- during Çavuşoğlu's visit to the region, Turkish warplanes co- conducted at least three separate airstrikes, including one on a village in Amadi district, which destroyed its mosque. On Wednesday, local Asayish security forces raided the offices of the New Generation Movement in Sulmani and arrested at least four people. New Generation Movement President Sashwar Abdullahid condemned the raid, saying that it was part of a strategy by the Kurdistan Democratic Party and the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan to undermine the movement. The Asayish later said that they were implementing a court order. Abdullahid, in his statement, called on the court to act apolitically in the matter. One member of New Generation was taken into custody the week before, following allegations by a movement lawmaker that people close to Abdullahid were attempting to blackmail them with videos taken without their knowledge. On Tuesday, a fire broke out at a facility used by the Independent High Electoral Commission in Erbil, destroying equipment and voting machines, although the extent of the damage is still being assessed. Goran MP in Baghdad, Kawa Mohammed, demanded an investigation by the federal government into the cause of the fire in order to determine whether there was foul play. Provincial elections will likely be held in southern and central Iraq in November, but not in the Kurdistan region. An IHEC warehouse storing completed ballots from last May's parliamentary election caught fire in Baghdad on June 10th. Dozens of activists held a press conference in Erbil on Monday to urge the Kurdistan parliament to make sure that there is an increase in the number of women holding official positions in the new government and that they are otherwise engaged in meaningful decision making at an official level. They called on the Kurdistan parliament to set a 30% quota for women in senior level ministerial offices and the region's presidency. The activists added that women have also been largely absent from the government formation talks, with parties mostly selecting men to be on their negotiating teams. There is a 25% quota for women in the parliament, and the activists argued that there should be a similar system for positions in the executive, but set set at 30%. To highlight the issue, they pointed out that there is only one female minister in the 8th cabinet and called on the region's officials to make sure that more women were integrally involved in the 9th cabinet. Finally, workers held rallies and gatherings across the Kurdistan region to mark International Workers' Day on Wednesday and to emphasize the importance of dignified labor and safe working conditions. The Kurdistan Workers Syndicate organized a number of official activities in Erbil, Sulmani, and Duhok. However, many workers expressed their concern about poor working conditions in the region and criticized the government and syndicate officials for not doing enough to improve the lives of workers. One worker told NRT Digital Media that many had to work even on International Workers' Day, which was announced as an official holiday by the KRG. The workers also criticized the syndicate and other organizations that ostensibly advocate for them, 
for becoming politicized and not for not doing anything substantive to improve the lives of workers. 33 workers died while on the job last year, according to the syndicate's statistics. Statistics. Tragically, it was reported that a 60-year-old worker died on the job on Wednesday afternoon in Kakamad when a gypsum rotary kiln collapsed. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Kurdistan This Week. If you'd like more information on these stories and others, check out our website, nrttv.com forward slash en, and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.